Feeling Retro. Welcome back Retro Lovers. Today we're taking a look at an iconic Technics MIDI Hi-Fi design with the SC-EH790 system component. Made up of a stack of four separates today. The RSDV290 double tape deck. The SH-EH790 sound processor. The SA-EH790 tuner and amplifier and the SL-EH790 5-disc CD changer on the top. We've got a couple of speakers here with us today. They have both seen better days, but they still produce a good sound as you'll hear a little bit later on. They're not the exact original subwoofers that would have come with this system, the 790 range, but they're a pretty good standard, even if they're not in the best of shapes. The brand on the front here is Technics, which began in Japan in 1965 and has since made a variety of hi-fi products such as turntables, amplifiers, receivers, tape decks, CD players and speakers, all for sale in various countries. It was originally conceived for a line of high-end audio equipment to compete against brands such as Nakamichi. From 2002 onwards, the products in the Technics range were rebranded as Panasonic, making this model from 2002 to 2003 one of the very last hi-fis to wear this Technics badge on the front. Now this particular hi-fi was a middle of the road system, would have cost around £500 when it was bought brand new. Whilst I think the silver and black separates do look great, I do think they might have aged a little bit compared to more simple designs. Perhaps it's these big flashy flares on the side, the big chunky design, combined with the slightly scratchy plastic material that's been used. It just means that they might not have stood the test of time as well as some other simpler, maybe less in your face designs. A bit like some that we've seen here before on Feeling Retro. Let us know in the comments section below. That being said, this doesn't just make for a good music system, but with the two loudspeakers, subwoofers that we've got here, and the range of connections on the back panels, it makes for a great all-round entertainment system. I love how the connectors on the back of this system allow you to stack in different ways that suit your room or your preferences. The connecting cables on these models aren't easily colour-coded, like some other systems that we reviewed here on Feeling Retro but they're easy enough to figure out. This was and still is a great system for all things. So let's get the system switched on and get our hello message. First of all, let's dive in and take a closer look at the CD changer. This model of the Technic CD changer supports WMA and MP3 formats. We have reviewed other similar systems here on Feeling Retro with multi CD changers, one from Pioneer and one from Sony, both running at different speeds and generating different amounts of noise. So let's get straight into disc one and disc two and see how quickly we can change between discs and see how noisy it is as well. Along the left hand side panel here you can choose which CD you want to listen to. CD one, two, three, four and five. Each one lighting up along the side. At the moment the disc trays are empty so we'll be using the disc open buttons here and let's open disc one. I have read some reviews online about this system and from tinkering it with myself my opinion would probably be that it is on the slower end from what I've seen in similar offerings from different companies. It might also perhaps be one of the noisier as well. But if the quality of the playback's high, then I think we can forgive the system for a slightly slower and noisier process of opening and closing. Today we've got the stack one on top of the other, so we've got it four stack tall. You can also have it in a different layout of having the tape deck and the CD player to one side and just having the processor and the tuner on the other side as well. I think I prefer it being tall in the centre of the two speakers like this. Along the top here you do have the option of having random. When you click that you'll see the display at the bottom changes and it's randomly changed now to disc 4. We've also got the repeat play button and when you press that a very small symbol comes up on the display here that shows that you're just going to repeat through these tracks. And on the right hand side here you've got some nice chunky and clunky backwards and forwards to skip tracks or fast forward, stop, play and pause. So a pretty no-thrill system there, let's move on to the stereo cassette deck. So before we move on to the cassette deck, let's give some of those CDs a listen and check out these separate enclosure speaker systems that we've got with us today. Let's listen to disc one, hit play and turn the volume up here on the amplifier. Let's just skip ahead to the stereo sound processor where we've got a few different options as well. 
First of all, we can change the display. You can see here, it just changes the graphics as they dance around along with the beat and the rhythm of the song. Now we don't have the surround sound kit with us today, but at the bottom here, you've got the Pro Logic and you've also got the Super Surround. And the Pro Logic button here is a decoder and a process that unfolds the sound into the original 4.0 surround, left and right and center and a single limited frequency range mono rear channel. The ProLogic decoder also uses steering logic, which drives amplifiers to raise or lower the output volume of each channel based on the current dominant sound direction. We've also got the Super Sound EQ button here, which gives you a much more powerful sound. You can see it just runs along the bottom display there. And then if we did have the surround system plugged in, we could have sensor focus. We could also have visual rear surround, multi-rear surround, or seat position. Another reason why earlier on I said this was a great round entertainment system and not just good for listening to CDs and tapes. It's also good if you want to plug it into your TV and use it as your surround sound arm whilst watching a movie. You'll see on the display here as well, we've got soft over at the left, sharp over at the right hand side, with the light in the center, 100 hertz on the left, 10 hertz on the right. And as we use the multi-jog here, you can see on the display, we're shifting between the options we're shifting from, if I go backwards, we're shifting from a flat sound over to a heavy clear sound, across to a soft hall sound, and finally the fourth choice is AIEQ. The button here just above the multi-jog is says Super 3D AIEQ. And when you press that button, it allows you to select the surround level and allowing you to achieve subtle sound quality settings with the soft, sharp, heavy and light coordinates on the screen. You can select two of the 3D settings for a surround effect. Having the multi-jog here on these Technics models is usually a sign that you've got one of the models that offers more. Whereas on the EH590 model, you've just got the four buttons, which doesn't quite allow you to access as much. The stereo cassette deck is a twin deck. You can open them separately. So then we've got two cassettes. We're listening to opera choruses in deck A. And we're listening to Best of All Woman in deck two. We've got the counter reset and the counter display buttons underneath. And next to that, we've got the selector to choose between deck one, which changes on the display, and deck two, which changes on the display. Using the two playback buttons on either side here, you can choose which side of the tape to play. So if we select the left-hand side, we'll play the first side of the tape. And using the other button, we can play the second side of the tape. Turn the volume down as we switch to Deck two, it should be all woman. And we can flip across to the other side. Now the colour that these light up depends on the operation that's taking place. If it's stopped, fast forwarding or rewinding, that should change to orange. And whilst it's playing on recording, that should change to green. In the middle here, we've got the fast forward and rewind buttons. They're nice and responsive and work really well. And over to the side, we've got Dolby NR, which is Dolby Noise Reduction. We also have the option here to take Edit, to record and pause, and another nice simple display on the front of the cassette deck. Now, because of where we're set up today, we won't really be able to listen to any of the radio. We don't get a very good signal down here, so all we'd get is white noise. But this is the main unit. This is where the power comes on, and this is where the standby button is too. Here we've got the play timer, record timer button and indicator which when you look at the display allows us to flip between play mode, record mode, or both. We also then have the clock timer mode, which allows you to set it to set, turn off at a certain time or to turn on at a certain time in the morning. So in the middle here, we have the FM mode button, which allows you to flip between FM auto or mono. Next to that, we've got two big buttons in the middle. One is input selector, and on the display here, you can choose whether we want to listen to the CD, the tape, the VCR, the aux, the tuner, and back to the CD. Next to that, we get to choose whether we want to listen to FM or AM, and then we get to manual tune underneath as well, increasing the bandwidth that we go to. At the bottom here, we get to use the, the tuning mode, which allows us to either manually tune it, or we get to search through the preset stations. And at the side here, we get to set, so that we can preset some of our favorite radio stations there. At the bottom here, we've got the RDS settings, which they advertise on the front, which standardizes several types of information that's transmitted and allows you to have more on the display here, including time, the station, and even sometimes identification and program information too. 
This is when you're allowed to see what song's playing and what radio station you're listening to, if the broadcaster can publish that information. At the top here, we've got a digital subwoofer here as well, and it allows you to flip between mid and max. I do like the volume controller here. It's a nice steady rise. Let's listen to CD3. Speakers here kicking out some good bass. Thanks for joining us today on Feeling Retro. Whilst we've been taking a look at this Technics MIDI design that you don't seem to be able to get away from if you're in the music scene, you see this design absolutely everywhere. Whilst maybe I don't think it's aged as well as some other designs, it's definitely going to be here to stay. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more things retro. And if you weren't already, I hope this Technics Hi-Fi has got you feeling retro.